Hey guys, this is Shaith from Shogunkraft, and today I'm going to be bringing you a slightly different video. Um, all of my videos up to this point have been about Shogun and um, Shogun 2, but another game that I play is Minecraft, um, so I'll be doing some videos on that as well. Um, today I'm going to be showing you how to do, make texture packs, or some tips and tricks when text making texture packs or skinning. Um, for the example I'm showing you today of Minecraft, you could use it for things like tile sets in other games. So just a bit about um, texture packs. A texture pack in Minecraft is a thing that changes um, the look of the blocks. It changes uh, how the environment looks, how the items look. Um, it just gives the, the Minecraft a whole sort of uh, new style that the person has created. So I'm going to show you a couple of uh, tricks on how to do that. So the program I'll be using today is this program here, um, GIMP2. And this program here, the GIMP stands for GNU Manip Image Manipulation Program, I think. Um, it's free software, and it's basically a free, ver a free version of Photoshop. So let's get into this. So if you are creating a texture pack, you're going to need a grid. Now, if it's for Minecraft, you would use the grid that's already in the terrain.png. But just in case you are using it for making tile sets for things like Game Maker or in Java or making your own games, um, I will show you how to do that. So what you want to do is you want to go to this tab here. Oh, sorry. First, you want to create something which is um, 320 by 320. That means we can get um, uh, uh, 32 by 32 blocks easily. So you want to go by down to filters. You want to go to render pattern. Oh, sorry, I need to create a layer first. You should probably create three layers because you'll have one layer for the grid, one layer for the background, and then one layer for the foreground. So let's just call this grid. You can do that by double clicking on the the thing and then typing what you want and then pressing enter. You have to press enter. And we could have this as foreground, press enter. And you can have this as background. See, background. Okay. So for the uh, the background, what you want to do is you want to probably the norm is to take a color, which is a, like a pinky purple. So we'll just take that, and drop that on. So then go to your grid layer just by clicking on it. If you don't have the layers tab, um, just go to this little button here, configure this tab, then add tab, then layers, and that's you got the layer tab easily. Filters. So click on your grid tab, filters, render, pattern, grid. And you want this um, spacing to be on however big you want the blocks to be. So I want mine to be 30, uh, 32, see, 32 pixels by 32 pixels. You want no offset, which means that it'll um, meet right at the edge. And then you just press, oh, you want this to be uh, black. And then you say OK. So now that you've got your grid, you want to click on your foreground color. Now, when you're editing um, tile sets or texture packs, you need to select these top two lines here, so up to this line, and you also want to select this line all the way into this corner, so from the corner here all the way up. You don't want to select any of these lines below or around it because that's the ones for the as you can see, that would be the lines for that one there. So you just want to select the lines that I've shown you. Let me just put this back into place. Alright, so I've already pre-made a texture. Um, now this is a very basic texture. Um, when you look at this, you think, man, that looks terrible. That looks horrible. Yeah? But this is how um, most textures start out. They start out with block work, uh, pixel work. So you start off with a base color then your low lights and your highlights. So these cut these um this color here, I'll just select it for you. Um is my um background and then you can hold control when you've got the pencil tool selected to um, select colors using the dropper. And this color here is my sort of background, sort of like in the cracks of the dirt. So at this point you're thinking this looks horrible, um but we can change that easily. The first thing that you want to do is a little um, feature called noise. Oh, before we go on to that, there's something a lot more important. Tiling. Tiling, as goes by the name of um, when you're doing a tile pack, you need things to be seamless so that when they 
get put to the edge they line up perfectly you see there that the blocks line up and then if you control V that again control C control V that these ones line up perfectly and these ones line up perfectly and so that's how you so I'm going to show you how to create that seamless editing so what you need to have is any block pixels that touch the edge sorry if I'm calling them blocks um, any pixel that touches the edge of your texture you need it to correspond to another one on the exact same place so as we see here we have one there and one there or they could be diagonal because um, I'll show you one which um, is diagonal there that one there is diagonal to that one but because when we select it control C control V because it's a diagonal it still carries on in a diagonal line creating a seamless effect so um, that's how you create thing um, like seamless editing. Then you have to join them up, um, but that's really easy. You just join that dot to that dot. You know the ones that are on the edge, you join them together until they look good. So we're going to use a little tool here, a function of GIMP called Noise. Now there's lots of different types of noise, but the one that we're going to be using today is HSV Noise. Uh, as it says here, randomize hue, saturation, and value independently, <laughs> whatever that means. Independently, I don't know. So these are my values here. Two, a hue of three. You can decrease that down to zero because um, that, that means it won't really change the colors as much. Um, saturation at 10, that changes the intensity of the colors. And value of 10, that um, is how much, it, how, may, how much noise it creates. So here we've created some noise. And you see instantly that that's looking like a better texture. It's added um, some more depth um, and makes it look less blocky. So that's just the next step to creating a good texture. However, we'll see that it still keeps the seamless effect even when it's got the noise because the blocks were lined up to, at the start. Okay. So the next tool that we're going to use is, I, I'm not really liking this color. I think it looks a bit too rich, but I want something to make it look more like yeah, earth that's been in uh, an old garden or so earth that's not being kept well. So you want to go to this tool here up in your thing called colors. Colorize. And then here you have lots of different things and you can change lots of different sliders and you can change the color. So I think that looks quite nice there. That's a hue of 36 if you want to know. Um, a saturation, I'll pull it down a little bit and the darkness, I'll pull it down a little bit. So there we've got a more earthy tone and we can see by doing control Z that it changes the earth to make it look just that bit more um, grimy. Now, even though we've changed that texture, it still looks slightly blocky. But there's a really easy way to fix that. You don't need to go mucking about by um, creating colors and creating color palettes and um, selecting things and dragging things. No, you can just use a simple uh, filter. So this filter is blur. You want to go to Gaussian blur. And Gaussian blur makes the, the pixels in the selection um, change slightly and shift in the way that they are. So you want to put that down to 1. And that will change, uh, shift the pixels by 1. And you see there that that has blur. Oopsie, I selected one too many. You have to make sure that it selects the whole um, thing that you want to select, or it'll create, as you saw there, little um, transparent edges. So blur, Gaussian blur, and then uh, value of one, and you'll see that that creates a really, really nice looking texture. It blends all the colors together so that you've not got that those harsh edges. And this is the kind of stuff that you see in uh, people like uh, Gary Doku's texture packs and stuff like that. I'm not sure if that's how they achieve this, but if they're watching this, this is if they don't know, this is a really easy way to achieve that kind of style. But you'll see that they still create a seamless texture. Um, as you see here, the steams the because we've done all that preparation work at the beginning, it still creates a seamless texture. All of the edges look crisp, well not crisp, uh, blurred together. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and you've learned a couple of bits and bobs. So the program that I'm using again is GIMP and um, I'll leave a link to it in the description. And just before we leave I'll show you a couple other things you can do. This is a tile pack that I'm creating um, for a game and you'll be able to see that this part here is just that part there but I've added a blur to the grass layer and then I've created that there by adding a simple amount of noise 
to the um, the stone texture and then here I've created lots of different instances of the sand blocks and here's quite an interesting one this is water um, and the water was achieved simply by me just um, creating a pattern that looked a lot like this and then adding a blur of two to it so I, would, I just created a pattern that looked like this um, multiple times on the image and you'll be able to see that in there here you'll be able to see that um, so I hope that you've enjoyed this you've learned a couple of bits and bobs I'll have some more um, Shogun 2 videos out for my Shogun fans and I will also have some skin editing um, tutorials out because I, I really like editing skins for Minecraft um, and I'll try and relate them back to Shogun 2 so that my uh, fans have some sort of uh, um, can watch these videos as well I'll make some ninja skins and some samurai skins and stuff like that um, so if you stay tuned for those that would be really, uh, really good I'll see you next time, bye